So we did Night of the Living Dead. We did Dawn of the Dead. Now we're doing Day of the Dead. Has nothing to do with the Mexican holiday. Uh, it's just what comes after dawn. I mean, day, I guess. I don't know. Guys, I'm going to flat out say it right off the bat. This movie is... Now, it could be proven uh, otherwise uh, later on in this series, but this is the best zombie movie ever made, in my opinion. It was my favorite zombie movie before making this series. Uh, as it stands now, it's still my favorite zombie movie, but who knows what might change as the series goes on. But this is the best zombie movie, in my opinion, ever. <laughs> Romero's classic Day of the Dead. And it's weird because usually when people think of the trilogy, uh, Day of the Dead is the last one they think of. They usually think Dawn of the Dead is the best, then Night of the Living Dead, then Day of the Dead. Um, when this movie came out, it made less money at the box office than the other two films. Critics were mixed about it. They thought the movie was a bit too somber and a bit too gloomy. I feel like it works for this movie. If you guys remember, when we talked about Dawn of the Dead... I was talking about how Romero has this hopeful view of the future and if something like a pandemic happened, everyone can come together and come and fight it. This movie is a bit of the antithesis of that. This movie is a lot more bleak. Um, it focuses more on how humans are basically fucking shit. No, they're not shit. I don't think they are. This movie has a lot to say about um, it gave me a lot of Vietnam War vibes. The overall theme of this movie is uh, mental illness and PTSD and stuff like that. Uh, the movie opens up, you're introduced right off to your main character, and it opens with her waking up from a nightmare. These characters in this movie have been traumatized from being uh, in a zombie apocalypse for so long. Because last time we saw uh, a Romero zombie film, there was still some society left. Uh, now, the whole world has to go and basically live in bunkers as zombies roam uh, above ground. So, this movie follows our three or four main characters as they go into one of these underground bunkers to hide from the zombies uh, only to be greeted by a bunch of soldiers and on who have PTSD. It makes you wonder who are the real monsters. Is it us or is it the zombies? But back to that theme of that PTSD, uh, like I talked about with Dawn of the Dead, Romero uses gore as a way to express his theme. So back in Dawn of the Dead, uh, it was a movie about over-consumerism, had a big lots of flashy gore, big bright orange blood. Uh, now the gore in this movie is a lot more traumatizing, a lot more realistic, a lot more graphic. Romero does not... Uh, cut away as these scenes are happening. If someone's getting bitten by 30 zombies, you're going to see it. It's really gross, and it makes you a little uncomfortable, but that's kind of the goal Romero's going for. There's scenes, the one that gets me is a scene where someone's eyeball gets ripped off. The, uh, the zombie just grabs him by the, uh, uh, what's this bone? The occipital bone? Or is it the ocular bone? One of those bones grabs him by that and just cracks it open. Very gross movie. Even in the opening of the movie, the first zombie you see has no jaw and no throat and his tongue is just dangling from his Adam's apple. It's really gross. Other than that, yeah, all these soldiers in this movie, they all have like extreme trauma they're all like uh like sexual deviants they're uh like rat laughing hysterically they're very violent even one of our main characters has ptsd 
uh, so there's the female lead in this movie, but she tr- like tries to manage it and manages to handle it a little bit better than the other people. The reason why this movie gave me a, a little bit of a Vietnam War vibe was uh, this movie takes place in uh, more of the south of the United States, so it had a bit of a jungle look to it. Uh, when we first arrive on this island or wherever they are, it looked really reminiscent of what 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 a Vietnam War movie would look like, and again, all the previous re- reasons I've mentioned. There's a stigma against mental illness. So one of the characters in this movie is a scientist, and he says, "Look, we can domesticate these zombies. Uh, we just have to communicate with to them." And he does a bunch of like mental exercises with these zombies. But basically, the head military guy uh, sees this as just stupid. It's like, what are you doing? You're giving therapy? Like, what's the matter with you? So there's a bit of a conflict and a bit of a stigma against uh, mental treatment. So all these things, uh, like I've mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, Romero loves social commentary in his film. A lot of people get a vibe of uh, animal testing in this movie. I, I can understand those themes too. Sometimes in this movie, the way Romero portrays his humans is so despicable and the zombies is mistreated. Uh, it does feel a bit like what our society is doing for animal testing and animal abuse and stuff like that. So I can understand those themes as well. But I definitely got more of that PTSD, uh, Vietnam War vibe. Other than that, the makeup and visuals are crazy amazing in this movie. Tom Savini worked on this movie. He's a legend. I don't know if he's still working today. But uh, I feel like there isn't as much a need in Hollywood for good makeup artists. Which is a shame because uh, when you look at movies that are like, I don't know, World War Z... The zombies never feel gross to me. In this movie, the zombies are fucking nasty. And I I get called zombie on a daily basis. I get like three hours of sleep every night. And every time I wake up in the morning, people are like, oh, Paul, you look like a zombie. I'm like, yeah, I do. But if someone were to say I look like a zombie from Day of the Dead, then I'd be fucking offended. These zombies are nasty. I don't want to look like these motherfucking zombies. They're gross. Uh, I liked all the acting in this movie. Some might say it's over the top. I don't think so. Like, these people have been stuck in a bunker for a long-ass time. So it's a little normal. They're going a little batshit insane. Um, To me, the antagonist steals the show. He has this great line. He says, I'm the one running this monkey farm, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time. Great line, great delivery, uh, and he's such a despicable character. You want him to fucking bite the dust in this movie, and holy hell does he bite the dust. One of the greatest, most satisfying deaths in any movie, in my opinion. Another thing I thought that was interesting about this movie, uh, I liked seeing uh, the zombies progressively get smarter and smarter the more the Frankenstein character uh, works with them. Uh, Not just like from a concept perspective, but from a performance perspective. Whoever plays the main zombie in this movie, uh, he starts off and he looks like your average zombie. And you can really see the humanity in his eyes as the movie progresses. It wasn't done over the top. It was very subtly done, but I thought it was really interesting. I love this movie. Uh, It's not only one of my favorite zombie movies. It's probably in my top 10 horror movies ever made. I was really looking forward to rewatching this movie and reviewing it. It's Romero's best movie, that's for sure. I still don't understand why people didn't like this movie initially. Maybe because it had so much to say about issues that were relevant at the time. 
and people thought it was ill-fitting in a zombie movie. I don't mind that. Horror movies have always been a very uh, social commentary, politically driven genre of film, more so than any other genre, in my opinion, except maybe comedy. When you think about it, uh, Romero tackled issues like Cold War. He tackled issues like uh, consumerism, uh, Vietnam War, just in this trilogy of films. And people think this one is the worst of the trilogy. Uh, I think it's the best. I can't get enough of this movie. It really, it's really an amazing movie. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. But honestly, over time, I can see myself maybe boosting it up to a 10 out of 10, which I don't really give often. But that's how much I love this movie. Uh, it's a short movie, 90 minutes, doesn't overstay its welcome, says what it has to say and gets the fuck out. Never a dull moment. So Day of the Dead... Check it out, please. Day of the Dead. Just watch it. Go and watch it. You'll have a good time, trust me. It makes Walking Dead look like a show made by sweaty bums. I've never seen Walking Dead. I can't really judge. George A. Romero's Day of the Dead. The most eagerly awaited day in horror film history.